From the Dice Abide Live studios, it's Late Night War Games with your hosts, Adam and John. Thank you. Thank you, Jay, and hello, everyone. I'm Adam, but you know me as the Dice Abide. And I'm John, also known as Wise Kensai, on the internets and in other places. <laughs> on all of the places. On all of the places. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, John, it's been, it's been a minute. You, I, you had a replacement for me? I think you, you tried a robot originally? Yeah, the robot wasn't quite cutting it, so I got I got uh, Adam 1.0 to come in from Texas, and I think I think it went it went better than it usually does. You got Swamp Adam. I got I got Swamp Adam. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Swat him or, or my Beach PJ. It's one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Beach PJ, exactly. <laughs> oh man, uh, what do you have tonight? Uh, I cracked open a bottle of uh, Ozaki sake. Which Ooh. was ten dollars in my local supermarket. Excellent. And for this size, it seemed appropriate. That's uh, you're getting a lot of ROI. Yes, exactly. Oh man! So I am uh, I am trying out the Red Hook Big Ballard IPA, and you know it's going to be good when they have to advertise in big letters. Don't worry, it'll just get you messed up. It's strong. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> we're, we're we're both going top shelf tonight. <laughs> Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, cheers! Cheers. Bottoms up. It's actually, it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. It is. It is. You know, when when I see, like I said, when I see those labels, it reminds me of like Arizona iced tea, and it's like ninety nine cents. It's like it doesn't matter <laughs> what what garbage is in there. It's only a dollar, right? Yeah, exactly. But, that seems fine. <clears throat> yeah, it's no, high fructose is... corn syrup with brown food coloring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hint of hint of tea, um, but no, this is uh, this is solid. I I actually order this, and I don't usually order IPAs. It's really go. nice. Well, John, let's kick it off with the news. Yeah. So as usual, we have our blog news going up first. Uh, this month's Bromat Academy mission is fighting in a fishbowl. So we've all had tables at tournaments which suck and have lots of open sniper lanes and it's really hard to shoot your way out so what do you do instead i've got some battle reports already up there that i've uh, you know covering missions that i've done and sort of talking through how i dealt with it uh or i didn't how i didn't deal with it um and i'm curious to see what your solutions are or or what experiences you might have so play a game send in the results and get entered uh, to win either a bromad academy patch or a blister of your choice from mythic games um we've also got uh Painting contest, end of the quarter. Uh, so send in any conversion that you want, Infinity Model. Uh, it doesn't have to be a crazy conversion. You don't have to be Obadiah Hampton. Uh, literally anything that we can put the store photo and your mini next to one another and say, oh, there's a difference, right? Like spot the difference in all those kids' magazines. Uh, if that if that's all that, that it is, is like a gun swap or an arm swap, that's totally okay. Remember, we're judging you on the paint job and not on the conversion job. Uh, of course, you know we'll get a little extra points if you do a particularly awesome one. But again, it's all—it's a painting contest, not a conversion contest. Along with that, if you want to, uh, you know, share your conversion unpainted with the internets, uh, you can totally do that. We just ask that you don't share your paint job or any work in progress photos uh, before the end of the sem uh, end of the semester. There I go again, uh, end, <laughs> end of the quarter. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Uh, that's that's what's going on in um, in Bromad Academy land. Uh, also in Lumbering Sprocket Land, we've got uh, the new Heavy Gear Blitz Tournament System version 0.2 out. Just some typo, you know, typo fixes, uh, some clarifications, etc. Nothing earth-shaking. Uh, so, but this month we're asking you for, for feedback on Commanding Presence, Prisoner Exchange, and Two Towers. Uh, so go ahead and play any one of those three missions. Let us know how it went, and you have a chance to win some DP9 store credit. Uh, details are on lumberingsprocket.com. Uh, if you are like Frank and did not read the mission, uh, you might do something like play Insurgency. Uh, which is not on the mission list, but we still value feedback. We want to know how that mission went. So Frank very uh, kindly wrote up a battle report, which we posted on lumberingsprocket.com. Uh, so if you if those mission missions don't suit your fancy, please feel free to send send in a report or just your thoughts. I've been having some wonderful conversations with people via email about uh, balance issues they found and so on. So please send stuff over to mailbag at lumberingsprocket.com if you have any sort of general thoughts. Or of course, you can hit us up on the forums and uh, the DP9 staff is of course paying attention to that as well. So that's what we've got there for, for blog news. Um, we've also got some sponsor news, I believe. That's right. So DreamPod Not has finally released the Harrier. And this is, like, I think it's the fastest gear in the game. 
moves Pretty like close to that. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 pretty it's, bonkers. It's, it's tied with the BF two twenty five, I believe. Okay, there we go. So yeah, it's, it's tied with with some human trash. Um, but it is it's a pretty rad model. You know, I I just received the or just built the um, uh, the Nemesis Jaguar that was released a couple episodes ago, mm-hmm. and the new the new sculpts that have been done digitally uh and the new casting are actually pretty nice i was pleasantly surprised by it so yeah this thing's really fast the cool thing is it has the double v engines on it like the back of the cataphract so it has four v engine cylinders on there to make it go super fast indeed uh, and it also comes with a uh with an lp the light particle accelerator which is neat because they haven't had one of those as a separate available bit before so now you can get one to convert um you know a couple other different profiles i think there's what is it? What are the the Crusader, the Crisis Crusader Five uh, yeah. variants? Yeah, yeah, and it that is has, red, that has an MPA, therefore... I believe. So it's still oh, not MPA? quite the same. Yeah, but uh, it's fine. But it's red. It goes faster. It 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 is quite speedy. It's got Gunnery Five, which is not great, but hey, hey, M N M O'Neill coming back with more gift subs. Thank you again. Um, coming back every every uh, episode, past couple of episodes, doing that. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's Harrier's different. out. A lot of people have been waiting for that. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it is only going to be five up, but it is piloting three up in Agile. It sits in a weird spot, like it, most of other Peace River's stuff. You have to well, so think very wild, carefully. The Wildcat is similar. Wildcat, I think, is moving eight or nine. Yeah. Uh, same thing, Arm 5, Gunnery 5 up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the Harrier, Harrier has that extra point of piloting, which is kind of a big deal when you combine it with Agile. Like, piloting three up Agile, going top speed. Yeah. It's kind of hard to hit, and at that point, you're just fishing for sixes, anyways. So, well, I mean, with the parkour starter, you've got advanced. So, if you're within 18 inches, well, that's right, right. So that helps. We all know that echoes with rifles do real well too. So, um, there's that. And for a point, you can give it a a jet pack. You can. It's true. Who doesn't want that to go even <laughs> faster? Or even doing crazy stuff. And then uh, what do we have next here? I think is that all the that is all the all stuff. The We've got some community news too. Oh, oh well, yeah, community news. Yeah, community news. So the Moonstone backer kit is still open for another three days. So if you missed out on the Kickstarter, you still have a chance to to uh, check it out. The models are awesome. This model is what Diana enraged, who just mm-hmm. looks killer. Yeah, um, it really does. It's limited edition, so if you want it, you gotta go get it now. Go get it. And then when, I think there's when, another when new. It, when, when does it close huh? again? When does On the twentieth? The twentieth. There you go. So yeah, time's so running out. Yeah. And then yeah, here we go. The command panels from Micro Studio, mm-hmm. which are kind of neat. I guess they're magnetic, which is something that is a perk compared to other panels I've used in the past. Yep. So you can literally hold it upright and slide them around. Um, it's like an enormous iPhone. Yeah. Exactly. And <laughs> do you even see they have like a holster for it? Yeah, they did have a holster for it. I mean, if I liked command panels, I would be sad that I didn't have this one, right? Because presumably right. I would have one already. Um, but I want people to know how cool I am with all my metal order tokens, so I can't use this. Because <laughs> you have all the coins. I have all the like coins. Ten of the JSA coins or something absurd like that? Well, I mean, when you have ten Petrus orders, you need ten JSA coins. There you, <laughs> there you go. Um, I really like the the different artwork they have, like... I was almost just 100% sold as soon as I saw that they had that NA2 art with the war driver and the Yan Yan. Sure. I mean, uh, like it's it's if you like command panels, this one is pretty damn good. It seems it I, seems at least from the videos that we've seen, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I I do like command panels, and they also have an option you can upload your logo, mm-hmm. and I am I am I am an absolute. You should do uh, your Mr. Yokoso thing. Oh, that's even better. I was just gonna put my stupid show logo on there. You know, like... this is why this is why you pay the, pay me the big bucks. Oh, AKA man. zero dollars. Yeah, right. So yeah, I I'm a sucker when I can upload my own art, and now I want to make like a Mr. Yoko. So yeah. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, this thing is cool. It's on Kickstarter. It just started, I think, today or yesterday. Yeah. So plenty of time to get on there. Fifty bucks, you get a panel with a bunch of tokens. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Name strong. Oh, here we go. And then from Patreon, Avatars of War has released uh, or started. I think they just released their August ones, um, and it includes six of their uh, characters from 
these are like sculpts that they've had available on their store for a long time, and now you can just get the STL files. Their their Patreon is an insanely good deal for four bucks. Like every month, it's a handful of amazing sculpts. Yep. So some cool ones. Definitely go check them out. Well, that's it for news. It's hobby time. Let's talk about some hobby. Let's do it. I've been building QK. I did it. I got the thing. I went down to Southern California last weekend or last week, which is why I wasn't here and cruised over to the old local game shop that is notorious for having inventory that doesn't move. And sure enough, they had the Sekban box, the Sekban HRL, Jambazan Sniper, the Azrael Fjordbach, and all three poses of the um, Havzas. So I had I had them. I see you also left the rifle off the standing Havza. I did because it's probably going to be my um, my uh, HRL version. So I'm thinking about having a 3D printing out an HRL and slapping it on the back. Oh, yeah, smart, smart. Uh, random call sign. That's uh, Azrael, not an Alpha C. That is the OG yeah. Fearbach. Well, not the OG Fearbach. The, yeah, the S5 Fearbach. They actually the OG have the Fearbach. OG, OG Fearbach too, and I was like, no, I can't, I can't do it. I mean, I've got one. I'm using it as an Invader proxy. I think it's totally reasonable. Sure. In fact, sure. I might strip it for parts when that when they finally come out with more Invader sculpts. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but this means that I have. Basically everything now built for QK except for the uh, the iguana and the Kaplan box, but those are being sent up to me from Mythic Games. So I'll have them you could, soon. You enough. couldn't let me have my my uh, my QK hipster nest to myself, huh? See how it is. Uh, it's just another NA two army. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, the uh, Sonago Scaler, the sec bands are super hard to put together and very rare. I think. What, what did you say that HRL cost you or cost oh. you what people on eBay? And the HRL cost me 10 bucks, but like on eBay, it goes for like 50, 60. Um, and the Azrael goes for more than double that often. So yeah. pretty stoked that it was all just sitting on the shelf there. Yeah, right. Come have it. It's high. There's high. It's stuff's hiding in, in your old, you know, hometown GameStop, uh, GameStop. So next time GameStop, yeah, can you imagine if yeah, GameStop no. sold stuff? But uh, yeah, very cool. But yeah. Building those sec band. Awful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up, conv- I, I, the guy who has the chain colt, I couldn't get his hands to meet because one was too short. Like it wasn't like a bending problem. Like one was just too yeah. short. So I, I ended up, I don't know how you solved that problem. You clearly did. I bent the arms differently. So gotcha. that they met. I, I just like, gave up and like chopped repos. off his other hand. So like, cause it's like the hand and then the other hand together. Right. Cause he's, he's, he's teacupping it effectively. Right. Yeah. So I, I chopped off the tea, the, the saucer part and then, uh, and then uh, put in um, uh, a backpack that on the other arm. So that that's what. Oh, there I'm you doing. go. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I did. Very cool. Well, I did a bunch of stuff. Uh, I finished painting up my Morans. Uh, I've had them for about ten years, uh, and I finally finished them. So sexy Flanders has been done for a while. Um, but then I sort of decided that, uh, Lakshmi needed a little bit of like face paint. So I threw mm-hmm. some on there and I went back and added some more face paint to sexy Flanders. And then of course, boarding shotgun man with the, uh, with the Cape needed some face paint too. So I like went and Googled a bunch of Maasai face paint things, uh, tried to execute it, failed miserably, repainted all the faces and here we are. <laughs> so oh, man. I was like, I, I cannot with my brush control and my like very sad brushes cannot execute, uh, on it, but. I was I was very happy with the results. Uh, no, I, they look really good. I'm glad nice. you added the face paint. Yeah, I I think it I think it makes them look nicely. You can sort of see how funnily uh, out of proportion everybody is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lakshmi is a, is a giant in comparison to the other two, and then uh, Sexy Flanders is like hunched over, so he looks even smaller next to his brother. Um, but hey, you know whatever, as long as it works. Um, I also put together my uh, new Cole paratrooper box which I'm a huge fan of. I did not realize that they basically all had light spike guns and LGLs plus LACs. Yeah. Uh, So that's really cool. I'm I'm surprised you didn't know that getting into it. I did not. I was just like, I need, I need the paratroopers. I didn't bother looking at them, like looking at the profile. I was just like, yeah, paratroopers. The only thing I care about is airdrop be in the middle of the table. And then I actually like opened the box and I was like, wait, these are funny looking guns. What do they actually have? Is this something I have to go tell Rooster about to like fix the profile? Nope. 
it's all correct. <laughs> uh, yep. And I am I'm very excited by it. Yeah, the standard the, so like the the standard paratroopers in heavy gear basically drop rockets and pick up grenade launchers. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a pretty cool little profile and, you know the the uh the light spike gun gives you an AP2 attack which is nice. Mhm. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially on those piloting 3 up uh Jaboas. Yeah, that'll help. They have brawl minus 1 though, so less oh, good okay. there. Oh, well, maybe not. But they'll they'll flail at you real good. Um right. I also painted up uh, the ADHL Prowler. Not my best work, but it was done in an afternoon, and so I will call it good. That's that's really what I'm looking for. Just just getting through the backlog so I can keep keep painting. Uh, like just getting like getting into so many other games as a result of this show has really underscored the the need for speed. <laughs> so I'm just like, ah, right? go 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 faster, more paint now. Um, so there's that. Uh, the sniper bits for the sniper echo. So this is the light rifle. Uh, finally were made and are available for sale in the DP9 store. So if you want to convert your Akos into snipers and you haven't done it already, they have the official bit uh, in pewter coming in. Um, so yeah, I, I believe that this is the most flexible loadout. There are other loadouts there, but this is the most generally applicable in the way that I play the game. So I made six of them because that seemed to be the correct number for Close. me. Uh, but I, yeah, we can get into the math in some other episode about heavy gear, but there's that. Uh, and then... Um, yeah, we've got uh, Jovian Wars too. Uh, so I put together the Jovian fleet uh, for Jovian Wars. There's three. There's um, Venus Sega, which is like the Earth conglomerate, I think, right? And then um, and then the the people from Jupiter, aka the jo Jovians. Uh, I really like the the ring design and sort of like the um, mm -hmm. rotational gravity stuff that they've got going on, which I'm a, a huge fan of. And it's basically Gundam in space. With yep. fighter fighter jets and or fighter spacecraft, and then like chonky near future spaceships, like what's not to like? So uh, we haven't gotten the game in yet. We have the rules though, um, and we will chug through it and see what happens. I'm I'm really we, excited. We we're learning it. Yeah, one of the cool things is that the the little Gundam gear things have um, have rockets. So they have like you, I don't know if this, which picture it's in, but uh, in in one of on some of these oh this it's in the bottom left, so you can, it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to see, but there's a there's a gun with like a big cannon on its back, and then another one with like a million rockets on it, and they're like bits that come with it, so you could presumably upgrade them in a different ways. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, neat. Yeah, so you can give them cooler guns. Gundam is also in space sometimes, yes, but uh, yeah, I think there's actually one more fleet uh, from Mercury that hasn't been has no models yet. Yeah, it has no models yet, but I think it's I think like it's conceptually been designed and all that just right. hasn't had a release. So four right. factions, which I think is is an OK amount. It's to, to very, get very respectable. Uh, yeah. I mean, especially since we have no idea what we're doing yet and have no idea how the game plays. So that's oh. changing soon uh, <laughs> and we'll uh, definitely let you know how that goes. But yeah, that's it for for hobby. On my end. I think that's all of our hobby. Uh, I think you've been reading something, haven't you, John? Yeah, I have. So I just sort of started uh, reading stuff. I, I actually blitzed through nine of Mr. Scalzi's books in the past like two weeks. So I read the Old Man's War series, uh, which I found to be fun and entertaining, reasonably thought-provoking, but I really, really liked uh, this Collapsing Empire book, which is the start of the Interdependency Trilogy. Um, and basically, without spoiling too much, basically it's a it's a story about um, a FTL methodology, which is like kind of Geller Field warp situation for those 40, 40k fans out there. Um, and the problem is uh, there so the the field like the you're only allowed to go between certain systems like that's the way the FTL works. So there's, there's anchor points for wormholes. And then uh, they start collapsing and cutting people off. And there's no FTL communication, right? So the only way to get data across and uh, is like to put a drone full of a bunch of hard drives, right? You just like send an email and it goes to a drone and the drone goes FTL for like a couple of weeks. It still takes a couple of weeks. You're going light years, but it takes like a, you know, like mm -hmm. a few weeks to get there. And then, you know, the drone pops out on the other end and then just like dumps everybody's emails into the communication system locally in, in the system, right? So... Communication is still slow. Pe people moving is still slow, but it's still possible to get from place to place in like a reasonable amount of time. Like they don't sure. need generation ships and stuff. But then um, 
all of the 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 uh, FTL stuff, it's called the flow, starts collapsing, and then all kinds of like crazy political stuff falls out of that. So I really enjoyed it. If you're looking for like a some brain candy, uh, go check it out. That's cool. So it's it's fast, but it's not maybe like flying on a dragon through Westeros fast. Right. Sure. <laughs> I guess. Oh, poor eighth season. Wah wah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, games. I like to do games. That's what I like to do. Well, I'll go first. I haven't yeah. had anything game-wise. Uh, I tried to schedule a Moonstone demo game with PJ uh, before last week's episode, but we weren't able to make it work due to uh, a bunch of people in a store, which is a good thing. So, um, right. So he had to stay late uh, to to sell people more things and play more games, which is what he should be doing as a store runner. Um, so it hasn't happened yet, but I hear you played something. Yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, like I said, being out of town all the time for games, but I did manage to get in a few rounds of story time chess with Jean, Aww. and she's pretty uh, pretty getting okay at it. The nice. the knights, the knights and the bishops are still the hardest ones, but. She she knows how to move pretty much every other piece just fine. How to capture pieces, uh, you know, probably a few more rounds of going through the book and just playing the different stories through. You know, she she might actually be ready for a, a game of actual Very chess. Great. Pretty exciting. It's fun watching a five year old be like, Dad, I want to play chess. And I'm like, What did you just say? Okay, let's do it. Very awesome. So. I I should play her soon. Is what we're what we're yeah. what we're building to just right? Smash her. Like no, 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 no. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I'd, I'd lose gracefully. How's that? There you go. Yeah, let the wiki win. Let the Exactly, right. We'll just, we'll, no. This is recorded, so you, it's on the internet that you called your daughter a wiki. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she, she has a lot of hair. It's fine. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> all right, well, that wraps up the... Uh, the 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 first part of the show which means it is time for our moe game sponsorship ship, 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 ship. okay here comes some sweet prizes every week mythic games gives one of our lucky listeners ten dollars in credit to moe-games.com um just for sitting here and and hanging out with us and talking about nerds john what should we what should our word of the day be how about jupiter since we were talking about Jovian Wars, Jovian Wars a second ago. Yeah. Boom. All right, guys. Type Jupiter in. There you go. Clint on it immediately. Mm -hmm. And we'll uh, we'll hit the button in a couple of seconds here and get somebody some credit. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to Jovian Wars. I've built, you know, all of two ships. <laughs> this one just needed to glue to the base. That was easy. And then uh, you know, these not didn't get them done in time for the uh, for the photos of the show, but they're pretty cool. They are very I'm, fun. I'm, I'm like, excited. They're kind of derpy, you know, like in a good way, though, compared to maybe like Battlefleet Gothic, which are like edgelord spaceships. These are a little more a little more Star Trek, um, a little more kind of the uh, the sci fi that I think is becoming popular now um, with like the expanse and stuff. A little sure. more realistic, mm -hmm. not quite Gundam, but yeah, it's fun. all right. Well, let's roll it. See who won. Hit that button. Hey, it's Clint. All right, Clint. Congratulations. I'll go ahead and get your info over to uh, Ruben, and we'll be good to go. So thank you very much, everyone, for uh, for joining us this evening. And congratulations, Clint, on that store credit. Yay. Without further delay, it's time for the main event. Yep. It's time. It's time. So, uh, Bostria, as most of you probably know, is uh, in Spain. So the time zone doesn't really work out for right now. Uh, so we pre-recorded an episode with him. Um, we'll watch it along with you. So if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, but enjoy the following interview. Yay! We'll see you in a little bit. There's some juicy stuff. There is some juice. There's hot goss. There's yeah. hot goss. Oh hot God. goss. All right. See you guys in a bit. <laughs> we are doing all right. How's it over in Spain? Right now here is a, a quarter past four, you know, 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. So we have a pretty sunny day. It's August. 
Lovely. We, we have been having a really uh, uneven summer. In the south of Spain, it's extremely hot, but here we have some rainy days, very regular, very uh, um, um, uh, ah, what's the word? unpredictable weather. Sure. Ah. Well, thank you very much for joining us um, for this special edition of Early Morning War Games. It's uh, <laughs> 7 o'clock in the morning for John and I. <laughs> yep. And... Uh, we're here, though, to talk with you about yeah. all of the big news coming out of Corvus Belli. Early bird, what I mean. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for waking up so early in order to make a podcast, which is so silly, in, in, <laughs> in, a, in a Monday, right? Yeah. Of course. No, no problem. I, I get plenty of sleep. I have two small kids. There you um, go. <laughs> so, yeah, let's, uh, let's get right into it. I think the big thing on everyone's mind and probably the biggest thing to come out of Corvus Belli for a, a long time is uh, thermoplastic. Yeah, I have Ooh. the Vostok right here. One of the Vostoks that you have seen on all the sample images, really. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, I was I was sent one of those actually and got to build it. And now we have it over at our buddy Frank for painting. Look at that. <laughs> it looks, I mean, I'll be honest. I was I was impressed. I was very skeptical. Ooh, this is the test subject, Stephen Rao. The flexibility is not so much when the when the part is thicker. This is sure. already thick, so you know you can apply some pressure and maybe bend it a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's not. It's so, not like that. So why Stephen Rao and not a more superior UJ model? <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Rao, if you remember back in the day, uh, what's the name of the other? Ah, the chain of command. Kirpal Singh. Akali Sikh commando. Uh, Kirpal Singh. Yep. Kirpal Singh and Stephen Rao were released pretty much like on, on one month and another month. Two characters from Acontecimento. Kirpal Singh was like the last uh, traditional sculpt miniature for Pano almost, you know. Oh, and okay. Stephen Rao. It was like the month after that or two months after that, Stephen Rao. So they were like similar acontecimento characters, but one was 3D and one was traditional. Uh, for, for Corvus Belli, it was a turning point. For many people, it went unnoticed. So that was a good sign because Kirpal mm -hmm. Singh was a very good miniature by Jose yeah. Luis Roch, which was the best traditionally handy sculpture back in the day. Uh, and the, the change is obvious regarding proportions, but uh, no, no, not so many people noticed that about that was 3D. In fact, the first Silhouette 2 3D figure was a uh, Phoenix from Steel Phalanx, and it still has a oh. few a few flaws from the process, but uh, the, the things got much better later. The first 3D model was, in fact, the Ojoroi. Because it was attacked, we, we mm -hmm. tried to make it 3D and, and knew that we were delivered a good result. It was more uh, concerning for us regarding Silhouette 2 Miniature. Yeah. Makes sense. That's pretty fascinating. And now he has lived his third life uh, as the, or second life as the first plastic test subject, right? Well, it has been living many lives. Every time we test a 3D printing machine or a any kind of new production mold or method or process, we use this guy because uh -huh. after all so many testings, the, the mold master and the crew production and yep. the art director know exactly where to look at oh. because it has so many details, they know many different surfaces. So they, they immediately notice if the quality of a sample test from a 3D printing service in Germany arrives. Yep. Yep. They immediately fix Stephen Rao. We send the steel file, print this, they send us, okay, mm, fine, no, failure here. Uh, Reject uh, it. You know. They know every curve of that model. They know where to look for molding issues. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they use it as a, as a test and they know where to look at, you know. So we have, a, we have a box full of Stephen Rao's of different <laughs> machines. Yeah, in many different colors, yeah. Well, that's funny. funny. So, yeah, I was... When when the announcement you know, was made that the switch to plastic, I was immediately brought back to thinking about when uh, confrontation made the switch from pewter to plastic, and yeah, 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 it yeah. killed you know it killed them, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is that is uh, and confrontation 
this company begin, began its, its course, its uh, path with Infinity with many ex Raham sculptors. Yeah. So we were very, very aware of, of what Raham did and, and, and those, those the persons behind that. And in fact, you can still even think today that Raham went like 10 years ahead of many other people because it was like the first guy who went to China thinking about Chinese production Mm -hmm. And well, the legend says that he even, uh, I don't know the name, Jambei, I guess it was the name. The guy slept in a military couch uh, in China oh, wow. when, when looking for production and stuff like that. And nowadays, all the French Kickstarters, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. lots of Kickstarters are made by very talented French artists. And then they say production to China. Now it's like the, the standard. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, with Raham there to. Yeah. to really changed the DNA of the company, went to China. I mean, uh, he failed, they failed, the Rahan collapsed, and, and all those sculptors we were, were knocking at Corpus Belli door at some point. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they, the confrontation still has art books and, and catalogs that looks uh, like nowadays standards. They made oh, incredible yeah. work. They were Excellent. way ahead of their time. Yeah. Uh, but I would, I, well, I have to say the big difference, though, when I received my Vostok to review, uh, it was a heck of a lot better. <laughs> yeah. um, so this new, this new, uh, I guess not new technology, the CO-Cast, uh, uses a thermoplastic that I guess is pretty close to water when it's heated up at, in terms of viscosity and can really get those details. Yeah, from what I heard from an expert, yes, uh, it's like liquid nylon, nylon, but in liquid state, it reaches every single corner mm -hmm. of the mold. Yeah, that's that's what, what we tested. Despite the technology and despite the material, there's a certain line where I uh, trust the person. Sure. The Corpus Belli production crew, which is highly skilled professionals that have been working with metal for more than 15 years already. And the CO cast technology is very similar to the mm -hmm metal spinning machines that we have here, the, the material of the molds. I should have graph molds to show you. Wow. Uh, they know how to deal with this kind of stuff. They, they know many tricks. The dishwasher trick, the needle trick, the sticker trick. They know a lot to, to pull out how, uh, better results of every mold. And they care a lot about the, about the quality. So what I'm trying to say, and to the, all the people who is, are writing their opinions on the internet, if you know another company that may see your cash, okay, fine for you, but don't compare that to what Corvus Belli is going to bring. Right. If you have seen this kind of plastic before, okay, fine for you, but you have not seen what Corvus Belli will be able to do with this. Because um, behind the technology and behind the material, the people that produces the product here is responsible for making better metal than the other companies that make better, make better assembly pieces than in 2021, than in 2014 and 2017 and 2019, every, every single year becoming better at that. So it's people who cares about a lot. And the way Corvus Bell is built, like there's a door here to my, to my right. And mm -hmm. if you cross that door, you leave the artist room to get into the production room. I mean, there's just a, a five-step walk from people from production to come over the computer to, with Carlos or with the artist and tell him, change this because it will be better over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. They do it immediately, you know. So it's that's why yeah. what, you have received, what you have received over there has the head attached to the body. Yep. The final product will have the head separated in a single piece uh, to be glued to the body. So the assembly has changed during these days because we were noticing things and we decided to change the, the way the figure is divided. So you pick your sample, this little head here yep. is already in production in the, in the, in the body. It, it will be now be a separate piece. So we will have better, uh, better definition great. of all the pieces yeah, the, around the neck. That was the only part of, of the, the sample that we got that I felt was a little bit iffy. And to me, it still felt workable. Like I've, yeah, I've worked fine. with worse, but... Um, it's great to hear that you're you know, you're iterating on it, right? You want to get it perfect when it goes out. Ah, oh, of course, but it's not uh, because of the pressure of 
the first one being made is constant. It's a constant process. It's like the the assembly of the figures from Outrage with the yeah. werewolf with the two arms uh, assembly from the back of the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a constant process of making things better. And, and so after a certain level of quality, I trust the person who is yeah, caring sure. because is Alex Quinteiro, who, apart from being chief in production, is the also the guy who is the scenery that you see in the in the photos, the photos of the figures when they are in context, in in you know with beautiful buildings or terrain behind them. When it's not a a arsenal piece or a micro art piece which are being sold, when it's a custom made piece, it's made by that same guy, you know. So, it's they are artists and they care. It's, it's like that. So when making this step into plastic. If that particular key person, Alex, or people from his production crew said no, the final thing will be no. Okay. But if they nod their head like yes, okay, we can consider this because they trust mm -hmm. the way to do things to achieve detail. And That's... yeah, and it's a, yeah. And a, it's a constant process, really. Oh, I think I think you actually put that really well. You know, like Corvus Belly, you know, has the reputation for making absolutely stunning pewter miniatures. And there's lots of companies out there that make not stunning pewter miniatures, you know. <laughs> so same same thing with SEOcast, right? Like sure. There there might be companies out there that are already making stuff in SEOcast, and that's great. But Corvus Belly is gonna do better. You know, they're they're, they're gonna make beautiful. Yeah. And it's, uh, for the companies that sell the metal to us, we are some kind of uh, quality test or something because we noticed bubbles years ago. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is making micro bubbles in the metal. Hey, guys who are providing the raw materials, we're noticing bubbles in your metal. No, no, that's impossible. We're noticing bubbles in your metal. Okay, we will check that again. You know, it's like, Corvus mm -hmm. Vele has said this. We notice some strange uh, brown color in a certain way on your metal. What? Yes, yes. It's like nobody is looking closer than us at, at the raw material. I know a guy who analyzes, I cannot reveal the name. I know a guy who works in a very high tech laboratory and analyzes in a microscope our pewter miniatures with other companies' pewter miniatures. And he scientifically proved to us that our metal was better. You know, <laughs> scientifically, you know, like, okay, science has science, it works. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's awesome. good, yeah. right? Like, and, and then to make a new mold to have a new face for the Vostok is a big deal, too, right? That's cost as well. Not as much as you think. Yeah. People okay. tend to think about molds like those steel molds that are made for those other sure. kinds of plastic molds here are like rubber molds right are you know are, are like two two plain surfaces of dog that mm -hmm. you can uh, smash over the metal master and, and get the, the hole and then you vulcanize that in a in a oven with pressure and heat and it becomes like rubber right and then you have to to make the way of, of, of the channel of the liquid in this time, not liquid metal, liquid uh, uh, thermoplastic, you know. And this mm -hmm. time there's no spinning involved in the process. This time it's just the uh, pressure, you know, you know that the, the, mm -hmm. for the metal casting is centrifugal force that makes yeah. the liquid reaches all the corners of the... Uh, and um, little different differences. Is it slower the process with plastics? Yes. But it balances it out with the different recipes of spinning speeds and temperature that we cast, we pour the metal on our molds. So that balances out because with the metal figures, Corvus Belli has a different recipe for every mold because oh, the first caster really obtains better results with this temperature and spinning with this speed in this direction or that direction. Oh, so wow. that is written down and mole CB0002475, this temperature, this speed, this is spinning. Holy and that cow. gives you the results. With plastic, you don't need to write down that recipe. It will be the same temperature and uh, the same amount of pressure. 
but uh, it takes a little more time in order to, for the for the plastic to dry and be able to open the mold. So the both issues balance uh, themselves. So no extra cost or a slower production time or anything like that. Very cool. So we've seen the uh, the Vostok, of course, and mm. uh, I'm guessing we're not going to see a plastic release of Stephen Rao. But... No, no. <laughs> Silhouette two miniatures are not in the in the process. By now, and Corus really has no real intention of switching the whole range of plastics. Right now okay. is the Vostoks, after the Vostoks, the Sun remotes, which will be another remote, so it, it won't be like a spectacular, it's like another remote, you know. Then the Polaris unit, I think that what that will get lots of attention. Okay. And the bases, the, the, the bases that we are releasing also, bases for your miniatures, and stuff like that, you know, uh, okay. whenever a big tax, something comes with that. Big and time. no plans for going back to the previous release figures and changing them to plastic. If that happens, uh, Corvus really is not willing to make it happen right now. But mm -hmm. if, again, the plastic rises again and, and, and pushes us to, to the direction, okay, maybe, maybe sure. another discussion. But really what pushed forward the, the whole decision was the price of metal. Sure. Corvus Belli has already the machinery. Corvus Belli has already the people are already researching and making tests. But suddenly it was the price of metal hitting us on the face that that got uh, the, the wheels turning. Yeah, and it's just that Yeah, right. and, and luckily we had samples in our hands to consider the decision. Without right. samples, we, 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 we will have to raise the prices or whatever, you know, which we would really didn't want to. That's really cool. So you guys are always experimenting and trying new things, and you know, it, you... it was a coincidence. It was a coincidence during the pandemic, 2020. Corvus Belli said, "Hey, you know, we cannot produce. We should not produce infinity figures in plastic, but we can consider producing figures in plastic for defiance, which has happened and is already delivered. But it mm -hmm. would have been positive for defiance to have already this machine here." Because all the terrain and the scenery could have been in plastic, and we can make big bases, yeah. And we have many ideas for other future upcoming crowdfunding projects, mm -hmm. side spin offs for Infinity, whatever, Rain Racers, whatever, uh, you know, Tag Ride is coming over there. Sure. Maybe we can, uh, that's not strictly speaking Infinity, that will not make the fan base panic. We can make uh, accessories to the game, terrain even in thermoplastic, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it will be. Very cool for us if we can begin small projects and, and deliver mm. small stuff, maybe stuff included in the tournament packs, which usually comes with lots of lots of extras. And if the time comes, if we can, can consider plastic, we will we will already have produced many many plastic models and miniatures and accessories. Okay, and then we can speak properly if we need that. That was the original idea. Yeah. Be, be, uh, behind purchasing, acquiring one CEOCAS machine, you mm. know, which is what we have now, one machine. But now it's like... <laughs> <laughs> so it still depends. We have to check really the numbers. Apart mm. from the... for the vocal reaction of everyone typing what they think on the, sure. on the social media, which was, has been positive for central people and negative for other people. And they are both right. Okay, I mean, if someone says, no, I prefer metal because I want metal, hey, they have the, the right to say it and to and to write it down, you know. But apart from expressing their opinions, after six months after releasing plastic stuff, we can check the numbers and has this SKU sold more copies than metal, less copies than metal, in the same amount of copies, you know. Mm -hmm. and, two, and two of those results are positive. Right. That's awesome. And so, yeah, you mentioned that we're going to see some, it sounds like bigger models, right? Going forward, the bigger, bulkier things, things yeah. that are, you know, that consume a lot of pewter, things that uh, are going to be expensive for shipping, all of that. Yeah, kind of you know, you know how it goes. Uh, if, if depending, uh, if it weighs less, then they will charge you on volumetric. If it's yeah. heavy, but it's small, yeah. they will charge you on weight. Hmm. It goes like that. Yeah, <laughs> they and... get you one way or another. Right, yeah. yeah they have to so make their bottom my, line too. 
Yeah, super pack with uh, two girls and two palvots, uh, volumetric. Magari Bagar, wait, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you mentioned Magari Bagar, and that was the one where, you know, when we were talking about going back and redoing old models in plastic, and I was like, well, maybe the Maggie, you know, like yeah, that thing yeah, is, yeah. is that might be good. heavy as hell. It's not it's, happening. I'd not be, I would not be surprising at some point during 2022 or whatever we sure. Corvus Belli says, okay, the Maggie, because... <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, it's but prohibited. right now, official warning here from Austria, not happening, okay? We, we have to check all the acceptance and, and perception and satisfying qualities sure. of, of the plastic on the fan base, which is so important for us, especially the American fan base, because it's the number one target uh, market okay? mm. is the one that buys more miniatures yes as i've got my like pile of unassembled miniatures over there i gotta start building oh, oh yeah me too <laughs> um, have, you, have you guys backed defiance because it's arriving course. it's arriving to the usa right now have you already received your boxes i haven't I have received not. wave two i received wave one yeah i got wave um one. Yeah. i think mine's out for shipping either today or tomorrow though oh yeah for yeah, because I'm 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 currently seeing pics of Facebook for yeah. people receiving finally defiance. But you decide to have two shipments, right? I do, I did two shipments, so I don't Me have to too. build it all at once. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I need I need to make more bases <laughs> to put more combined on. Right. Um, but... Same here. I, I I could access wave two if I wanted, but what I decide with a friend is to play wave one. So mm. we are mm. like in mission seven already. Yeah. Oh, very so. cool. Maybe you'll play all the expansions and all that. I'm just, yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to those characters. From from the developers, which I speak to them every day, they say that the most proud rulebook campaign book that they have made is the Outcast one. Is the mm -hmm. one that they think that is the the chef kiss of of the whole thing. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, great. So yeah, it, you know, I I don't think plastic is going to be you know, like you said in a few months measure the the response, but I think that after it's out there, it's going to be a non-issue. Uh, just from my own experience with the Vostok, people are going to you know they're going to rage about it for a minute, and then they'll get over it because the models are still going to look good. Um, the cool. numbers the numbers will talk, and they talk louder right. than anyone else. Uh, we will be very worried and very concerned about everything because sure. Uh, we are not a very super big company, big corporation. We have to care about not losing an, a single customer. We mm -hmm. want to satisfy everyone. It's the, the most difficult task to do. But, you know, our distinguished competitors are, you know, there always. <laughs> and then keep releasing games that are more and more similar to Infinity somehow. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. <laughs> <laughs> But going going it's back like to, 2000, to 2018, 2021, yeah, just three years, really, just three years, and again, you try yeah. again, okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a reason why we keep coming back to Infinity. I was gonna say uh, we have we've in just in, in discussions we've had. Uh, so taking the Polaris team as an example, right? You'll have an S2 like the lady, right? Will be an S2 miniature, and she'll yeah, be, it will be metal. metal. Yeah, and then you'll have the bear pod in plastic. Um, are yes, you changing yes. anything about the packaging to make sure that uh, you know the well, metal doesn't beat there up will the plastic? Be a, there will be a labeling effort on the packaging in order to make people be aware that mm -hmm. one miniature will be plastic, another will be metal, or the sun remotes, they are both plastic. You know. mm -hmm. So right. labeling effort there. Gotcha. Something that I'm reading, and I just want to, to keep people aware of it, because people is already trying to conclude many, many extra things sure. just from looking at the Vostok remote. They put this remote next to other normal remotes, and they say, it's thicker. They are designing it thicker because of plastic, and it's like, no. True story here. I had to write uh, to the painter of the figure, to, which well, we haven't seen the official painting yet, paint job yet, and I have to write to other people in the team because we send the painter, Tocino, Sergio Luque, uh, the metal copy of, of the Boston, really. Oh. Mm. <laughs> so it happened that quick. The painter have the metal copy of this remote for painting. And I had to say, guys, we should send him the, the plastic version. <laughs> it should be the plastic version, the, the one to do the paint. Oh, yeah, we forgot about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So... 
there are people already saying, hey, they are, they are thicker remotes because they're plastic. No, they're thicker remotes because they're thicker <laughs> remotes. They were designed with those volumes. I think that the Vostok has more in common with the Rudras Gambot uh -huh. from Aleph sure. mm -hmm. than anything else. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a bigger remote. The most remote. recently designed, yeah. yeah. The most recently designed remotes and, and that kind of stuff. Anyway, are you, are you new... guys worried about uh, the the plastic being damaged by metal in the box as it as it gets shipped places? Is that something you've seen? Never thought about it really. I mean, uh, the the everything will come between foam and in inside their box. Right. Uh, well, we we'll have to consider that if we put together two big pieces of the different material inside the box. The the female controller of the beer pot will is not big enough to damage the plastic yeah, beer yeah. pot. Okay, but if we put together a metal tag and a plastic remote together in a box, which I cannot think that happening, yeah, we will have to to com to consider uh, comparti compartimentation, encapsulating that properly. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I, I you know I'm looking forward to seeing obviously the bear pod. Uh, yeah, I think everybody's excited about else? that. Right, and what else? Could yeah, he's the three render. Do you? No, I don't have it. Right <laughs> because we take a look at it and we decided to make some changes. That's why. So, cool. so, uh, so speaking of that bear pod, that bear pod I think is part of Code One, right? Yeah, yeah, it has been included in Code One. As, so let's talk about Crimson as, stuff. As Margot and Duroc, so uh, Cosmofloating Code 1 has two, not just one, but two boxes of a lo uh, lovely girl and a cute beast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've got as... the, yeah. the bear and the wolf. Yeah, correctly. Well, I mean, a Kimiras 5 is already incredibly awesome. I, 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 don't, I cannot... I still have to see the beer pole Polaris if that can be even better than a Kim Mirage 5. I mean, oh, that's gonna uh, be hard. To, to, yeah, I mean, the first, the best miniatures from last year, I think, is still the Kim Mirage 5, really. Oh, yeah. yeah. No question. No, I, I told myself for years, you know, I started with US Ariadna, and I told myself for years, I'm not going to do vanilla Ariadna. I'm not going to do vanilla Ariadna. And then the new Mirage 5 sculpt came out, and now I've got to build a bunch of Ariadna. You know, <laughs> I've, got, I've got to finish the rest of the army. That model is spectacular. Um, so we've just got the uh, the crimson one or crimson stone just came out for code one, and so I guess the, you know some of the big questions are like what's so what's going to happen to the old code one? What's going to happen to the the Pano and Yujing armies in there? The white banner and Svalrahima? Are we going to see those repackaged? Is this going to be like like I a I think, I think that the original intention is to, to discontinue Operation Kalstrom and then release two action packs with the panel ones and the Eugene ones already isolated, uh, mm -hmm. so, so they don't misbehave yeah, right. <laughs> in, in separated yeah. packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this formula, because after all the um, battle pack, dire force pack, super pack, remote stack, uh, then like the those uh, those how do we call them the, the booster or... booster packs and then the last blister of the last hero and that's the whole year of releases for mm -hmm. Pan on Yuching. Now we're getting the year of releases for Nomads and Ariadna. Yeah, yeah. And that pretty much puts them in, in, in a role for, for delivering the code one treatment, which was what we know. So in in the future, if other factions get in the cold one treatment, you know what to expect. You know that is maybe it's exciting for players, mm -hmm. maybe not that exciting. Okay, some people celebrate with calls, uh, not so much repacks. But you have to consider that the cold one label for stores and distributors, especially newly people who get new into Infinity. The question that they were asking for years is what is the essential, what is the first step? Yep. And now that is already in, in their own packaging. So there are no questions about it. And that is incredibly useful for, for new stores and distributors. Yeah, I uh, think that's a clever, I think that's a really clever approach. Um, so like I worked at, at Games Workshop for years, and like one of the things that they do is they have they have a core line that they require people to carry. 
and code one kind of fulfills that same um that job but it lets the it, it, it's sold as a product line as opposed to like forcing product down the throat of the the, the, the store yes because yeah. it has its own set of rules and its own army builder uh, mm -hmm. that encapsulates uh, that range you know, and and it's great for beginner communities I, I read recently the advice of someone on, on the internet that it's better for new players to play among them instead of jumping to the pool of M4 veteran players that will destroy them. You know, it's like making the kids pool and the, and the grown ups pool, you know. <laughs> but uh, until until they get familiar with the system, I think it's correct, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes not... total sense. Because that you can yours? be a kind player, but you can be an absolute asshole of a player and make uh, someone have a first uh, annoying experience with Infinity that runs away from it, you know. Right. So yeah. that, that actually makes a lot of sense. You kind of ramp people up into it. And that's and that's kind of what, what I did when I started my, you know, when I started playing Infinity. It was like me and two friends playing in my garage. And we knew that there was a bigger club down the street, but we're like, we're afraid of them, you know. <laughs> like, we need to get good. We need to, to practice before we go out there. I, I mean, so just just sense. from a teaching perspective, I think it's a great idea too. Because we used to teach people with Recon Plus, the uh, the thing by Ash Parker over at Gorilla Miniature Games. Um, mm -hmm. And the problem with that is you could you could you know be a jerk and then put a bunch of Quang Chi in a Yu Jing list and have a million orders to power something really scary at 150. Um, but Code One by reducing the amount of stuff that you can take in the list and having a very specific curated set of models. Uh, makes things like that not possible, which I which I really like, um, and it just it just removes cognitive load from from new players. It's just like this is what you have, you know, you don't have all these other options. Just play this, and it's still fun for for a veteran player. It's not like dumbed down, which I like too. Back in the day when we were testing Infinity and two probably, uh, we were coming up with, hey, what if someone comes with. 25 punches or 25 Cadwellians <laughs> because the, the availabilities and they were not that uh, narrow uh, like nowadays. Back in the day, uh, I think Caledonia had total availability of Cadwellians. What if someone comes with 35 Cadwellians? And we were like, well, then they will have to purchase 25 uh, miniatures for Cadwellians, which we're fine with. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened. <laughs> I, I had 12. <laughs> at right. one point in time <laughs> yeah because because they're beautiful come on we have the first blister of two then the box of four then the new box of four you know yeah and now we have new wallace jumping yeah yep can't wait to get new wallace so he's coming out wallace is actually coming out pretty soon right he's going to be in the new uh he's beyond beyond operation crimson stone yeah yeah he's there and are we Next. going to see a similar rollout to the the Crimson Stone like we did for Call Storm? Are we going to see you know the Beyond, and then I think what comes next is it the remotes or support? Yeah, the tags? yeah, like, correct. It's kind of a, a, a yes, 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 specific yes. order. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Beyond oh. support remotes tag, but instead of tag, Ariana gets a beast. That's correct. Oh, I wonder what go. that's going to be. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to get the Ariana tag finally in Code One. That's not where it's going to get delivered first. You just have to look at Tag Rise and look at the Mechanica Tag Cape Crawler, the Leica. Oh, <laughs> oh I love the, the Cape Crawler. That's the most, the closest thing to an Ariana Tag that you have by now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it sounds like yeah, it sounds like Crimson Stone is kind of going out predictably. I think the reviews on it have been overall positive, um, but Tag Raid. That is something I'm excited for. It was, it was probably my excitement was probably here until I saw the cave crawler, and then it was here. <laughs> I I love the cave crawler. <laughs> it is really cool. Tag right is the next big thing by Corbus Belli. It's going to be another crowdfunding campaign. It's, it's similar to the financing structure uh, from a company perspective. You know, like, yeah. hey, we're going to launch a standalone game, Infinity spin-off in a certain way, but this time is going to be more about big miniatures, okay? Mm -hmm. Tag Ride is going to have a set of rules more similar in a certain way to Code 1, okay? 
Okay. It's, it's pretty much like using that kind of engine rules. Uh, it's, it's a bit more pure, more streamlined in a certain way, because mm -hmm. it doesn't have to consider uh, the, the huge amount of tool profiles that Infinity has. It, it is a game on its own, and it will allow M4 players to jump in and you know, we will, we will make, remember, remember that in Defiance, we made like reinforcement packs and, and then mm -hmm. in the core comes with all the cards of the current existing M, uh, M4 figures that you can play in Defiance, you know, that mm -hmm. will happen at some point, you know, I consider that Corvus Valley during the campaign, I don't want to spoil, but there will be so many friendly wings at the community like, yeah, <laughs> and also this, yeah, <laughs> and people should get super crazy. So we have many surprises yet to unveil, consider that we haven't reached the campaign yet. We are right now very heavily preparing the demo game that we will make uh, live in Twitch streaming by the end of the month. Ooh. And yeah, and, and uh, right after that video, we will push a magic button and make Infinity Tag Ride available on TTS, so people can download a PDF, read the read the rules, and play with the basic tags and and the painted version of them on TTS, so they can get familiar and check it out and check how it goes. That's exciting. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You you kind of hinted at it, so we are going to see stretch goals for the Kickstarter and, and... oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> So many surprises, so many things. Can you <laughs> yeah. tell us if there's going to be more than just four tags? Uh, I cannot tell you anything like that because <laughs> they will kick my balls, okay? But uh, there are many surprises left. What you're saying okay. is you've confirmed that there will be a combined army tag there to extract cesium and beat up all the other miners. We always look at the Mega Beast as the to combine army <laughs> tag, really. <laughs> that's Exactly, that's the... Oh, okay, uh, gotcha, the, the <laughs> worm. The big balls coming down. So you mentioned that we're going to have a, a tabletop simulator uh, module available to download for this. Yeah, I... yeah, pretty much. I mean, the testers have uh, access to it in order to test externally from CB the, the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, once the work was done, they, they, they really considered to make a limited access, limited demo game uh, available for, for people interested. Awesome. You know? Is this going to have uh, the three, like the, the 3D scanned Models yep. of your paint jobs and ooh, yeah, 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 that's very good. Yeah. We learn how to reduce the the size and the definition of the textures in order to make it work uh, mm -hmm. fluidly on mm -hmm. TTS. Mm -hmm. had to, but uh, that program that I use for 3D scan the miniatures and be able to make trailers and 3D videos with them is surprisingly good. I mean, yeah, you, you use get... Unity, right? No. I mean, uh, for the, for the TTS, mm -hmm. I don't know what they use. We use mostly Blender and a Zephyr 3D for photo scanning. Okay. okay. Which is the the program that the people from the community on TTS, that people that community that is somehow uh, with Ball C as their leader, <laughs> they they found out the the program. There's someone else there that who knows about photo scanning and and told everybody how to use the program. Made a very useful. A video tutorial and oh, yeah. log tutorial and mm -hmm. from that well when I when I saw first that I, uh, my jaw dropped because while I was already working with 3D but I couldn't uh, I didn't knew how to photo scan the models and put them inside the, sure. the 3D interface when I saw that <laughs> I said <laughs> okay I know what I'm doing for Corvus Valley in the next 10 years right <laughs> yeah photo scan yeah. everything and make 3D environments and make them dance you know <laughs> yeah yeah the amount of content that vol has been able to produce and you know with with the, obviously the support of his community has been fantastic for mm -hmm. keeping yeah. infinity kind of alive during covid right like at least keeping the community engaged with each other yeah and he makes now like a sitcom he has these girls around oh. that yeah uh, he makes comedy sketches with with infinity players and stuff like that oh no really? i haven't seen that yeah. yet Oh yeah, yeah. check them it's, out. It's there <laughs> for for all to see. Uh, it's... So, all right. So we're gonna have this Kickstarter. There's gonna be stretch goals. There may or may not be more tags. Um, <laughs> and uh, the we're gonna see it on t on Tabletop Simulator. Um, I think there was some mention that the you know you, we're gonna have some N4 profiles for it. And is this gonna be 
you know, kind of like Defiance, where they're full blown characters usable in the game, or do you think it's going to be maybe a little bit more like, um, like the Megalodron, where it's like this is a usable in a narrative game, but not really in a in a tournament situation? Well, uh, without revealing anything else, that yeah. Duff will keep me on the balls by doing it. But the Megalodron was like the first tag right thing, you know, while mm-hmm. doing Defiance. When we revealed and, and, and teased and put there the Megalodron super big, super huge, the reaction of the community, the backers and everybody else went crazy. Mm-hmm. So immediately that sold out, uh, that, that, that uh, reached to our minds like we should do more stuff with big miniatures because uh, suddenly pulling out 10 Silhouette 2 miniatures won't have the impact of one huge miniature. Sure. So it was like, okay, fine. But there is another very intense moment in Infinity. When Code 1 released the four simultaneous tag, the Cutter, the Blue Wolf, the Sphinx, and the Zeta mm-hmm. unit. Mm-hmm. And people also went super crazy about it. Okay. That was like the second moment where like, uh, guys, we should do this every year, or <laughs> the next big game should be about tags, or something mm-hmm. like that, because it's obviously that in the next box, we were going to put a lot of Silhouette 2 miniatures, but people react uh, w- exponentially when the big miniatures are big. You know? mm-hmm. So it was like, what, what do we do with this? It's obvious that people react to the, to the tax and to the Megalodron. So big miniatures, you know. Excellent. And uh, speaking of the Megalodron, do you think we'll get an N4 updated profile for it eventually? That is in the hands of the... Puppet Master here, which is Gutier. Gutier uh, okay. can allow the Megalodron to have a profile in a narrative mission and stuff like that. But if you're thinking competitive, uh, no, no, balance, no. tournament ready Megalodron, uh, they're pretty much against that. Sure, sure. Um, so we, we right, have, that, some, we have some general news from, from your blog posts about tag profiles. Oh. Arm 4, 2 wounds. But it looks like that's based on the 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 art here it, it has arm four two wounds in in tag raid, but I wonder that that's an interesting tag profile for like N four right that's that's squishier than a brigada. Oh yeah yeah, well that's the profile for tag raid which goes makes the game go faster. You gotcha. Know? Okay. Uh, and that's less tokens piece. less tokens involved in the in the board in the card you know is is uh, quicker to follow you know. Mm. As you can see there, you can see movement 3-2, okay? Instead of inches, instead of centimeters, they will have, you know, uh, measuring segments. And is uh, well, producing cardboard rules and go faster with it in, instead of flexing a measuring tape or anything else. I really like what they did in order to streamline and make the board game behave as a board game regarding movement and range of weapons, mm-hmm. which is like having a a rule with three segments depending on movement or shooting, and it's like fits here, fits here, or fits here. Anything else, you know, mm. you don't have to say 31 inches uh, is right. three different color ranges. Got it. And it's that. So uh, believe me, that makes everything go much faster than the measuring, measuring tape, and and we have people here who doesn't even play Infinity and understood that quicker than mm-hmm. centimeters a measuring tape, really. So some stuff is like Code 1, but even more streamlined, but specifically for a board game, which is this, that goes over tiles and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah really useful. It for example, like... there, is, there is like no zone of control, but much more depending on the hexagon you are in and mm-hmm. the hexagons adjacent to the figure you have. So the, the hexagon tiles are really helpful for, you know, also the the artificial intelligence of the beast, you know, mm-hmm. and movement rules and everything, you know, whenever everything is a bit more <laughs> fleshed out, right. works much better in order to write rules that people understand quicker and, you know. Very cool. So it looks like a little bit of a combination of what we saw in Defiance with the character cards along with you know, Code 1 rules backing it? Well, Defiance was closer to Aristeia in many mm-hmm. traits of the game. This one is closer to Infinity. 
Mm. In fact, Infinity players would jump into this and and go with it in two seconds. You know. Yeah, I mean, just I mean, looking we at have, this. We have we have yeah, testing right. testing sessions with simultaneously four players, and we have simultaneously three Infinity players, one player who hasn't played Infinity, and it was like, okay, fine, do 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 do, and the one is like, what is going on? Sorry, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> So, but uh, they tweak a little bit uh, the dodge rules uh, in a very cool way, like, because there were a lot of dodge, because, okay, stuff is happening over there, but I have on the side, I dodge so I can move like that, and that was creating four players simultaneously is not like two players one on one. Mm -hmm. Four players and a mega beast, there's a lot of things going on, so they have to... Uh, you know, clarify the actions and the arrows and mm. streamline that in order not to get confused. And and those are the decisions that are doing that regarding rules. And I think they're the most important decisions. I mean, they're the ones that will make the game less chaotic, more elegant, more structurized, you know. Mm -hmm. Who are having the face-to-face -face role? You and you, okay. Who is having uh, an ARO that is, like, unrelated? Okay, you know, reducing that. Makes awesome. Sense. And it also looks like there'll be some customization. You can add upgrades and equipment to your to your tags. Yeah, especially in the campaign mode. But I'm revealing too much. That we, we, you will get into the campaign okay. and, and, and further <laughs> information will arrive beautifully, beautifully exposed to you with, with trees and, and stuff like that. But yeah, a campaign. there's a, cam, uh, a campaign mode, which is important because many people will maybe play this game as like a, you know, have fun, just have one game in a big event or something. But mm -hmm. if you want, you can go deeper with it. Okay, you can really get into different missions, different scenarios, different stuff happen. Gotcha, so campaign mode, will, be a, will there be a tournament mode? Well, tournament modes, uh, I don't know if this will get a competitive scene. I know, we know that it's a lot of fun. That's that's the first right. stone of it, really. In fact, you know that this game came from the community. I mean, Hunger Games or Deathmatch. Uh, mm -hmm. In Barcelona, they were playing this many years ago. Yeah. Not with tags, with figures, you know, but like, hey, we... they brought down emails to us many years ago, like, hey, we are having a lot of fun Playing Infinity like like if it's Quake Arena, mm -hmm. yeah, Quake Quake Arena. Look at the words, okay? It's from so much long ago. You oh know? yeah, <laughs> <It's> a, <it's... laughs> I remember playing that. I played a lot of Quake. So <laughs> yeah, multiplayer, simultaneous, and and getting crazy and random loot, random yep. Super Mario Kart box, you mm -hmm. know that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Uh, also, that we have that uh, Bishop War, one of those theme weeks, and we put a table there, with, and everybody was with tags and and getting random rolling a dice on a chart, random equipment, and people got crazy rolls. So we know we knew for sure that it was fun, and we were considering it for for becoming a, a game on its own for many years, and then the thing with the big miniatures happened, and you know. Once again, it's like defiance. Hey, this could happen like this, like that, and finally became something, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's kind of yeah, it, like you said, it evolved out of something that people were already kind of playing on their own in the community, and something you guys were having fun at the office, and then it's like we should, we should sell this. <laughs> yeah, like the the big miniatures are selling. We should we should make a game around it. Makes sense. So. Uh, let's let's kind of segue into I guess you know the the main uh, the main product of course belly in infinity and n4 um, this is something that you know John and I play too much of <laughs> <laughs> not enough <laughs> never enough no no it really uh, isn't I wish I had more time to play more games right I just... so I remember at the at the end of n3 it felt like every two months another book was coming out and now it's been a while since a book came out, and I'm kind of missing it. <laughs> Are we going to see any uh, books coming out soon, ever? That's a very really interesting question. If you take a look at it, uh, Uprising, Third Offensive, and Devil's Fall were kind of a reaction from Corpus Belli to what the market, what, what, to what was happening on the market. Hmm. And that what was happening on the market was that 
one super company was rising up and, and sucking off the all the oxygen. Okay. Sure. And Corvus Belli had to begin to deliver all those sectoral armies that we were, have been promising for so long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and, and some of them not even promised. So then it just happened. Okay, because the mercenary companies yep. <laughs> remember that it was like like Christmas 2018 or 2017, I still don't remember. And suddenly the Druze Bayram oh, yeah. I... army a pop up on the army, and suddenly it was a new army that you could play with, you know, but, without yeah, army... any any previous announcement. A new army show up, you know. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh man, no, I remember it very vividly yeah. because Druze came out. I immediately bought 100% of it, and then two months later, I went to Las Ve the Las Vegas Open, which I think was where I met you. And I came in third place with Drews. And like, oh, I was really? like, I, yeah, oh, I love Drews. Drews are great. Some They're people say he's the worst army. I mean, I mean, everybody no, will say that the, 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 the whatever army is the worst army. Like, that's just the internet. <laughs> so. so, as I was saying, uh, Corvus Belli was reacting with the trilogy of books, okay? Mm -hmm. That was, uh, in a way, uh, delivering what people wanted, what was new oxygen to, to the tournament base and stuff like that, and having the new GSA and Baruna and Tunguska. Baruna and Tunguska, come on. I mean, yeah. those were dreams for the, for the people back in the day, you know, being able to deliver so many armies so quickly, you know, and, and then the mercenary companies. When we think about armies, it's not the same to have sectoral armies inside Pano or Yuching than to having the NA2 mercenary armies. It's like the NA2 without considering JSA and Spiral Corps among them, if we get them out of the NA2 label, the rest of them do not occupy space. Okay. Mm -hmm. The SKU bloat of the Corvus Lee catalog do not suffer from mercenary companies. Okay. They do suffer from having hack Islam for sectoral armies, which doesn't happen when they have three, but having a fourth that will be additional pressure to the range. Okay. I but see. doesn't but Dashat company does not bring mm, pressure to, to the hack Islam range, you know. Because one thing implies having SKUs, the other does not imply having SKUs right. specifically for that mercenary. That's why the white company exists, okay? Because Spalar uh, Heima, Pano, and Spalar Heima, Yuching exist already. They have the pressure of having SKUs. So, next books, future books in the, uh, for Infinity in the future? Yes. Uh, one that will be about fire teams and having a new M4 fire team rule? Yes. Ooh. A new fire team rule that distinguishes between fire teams being mixed, being not mixed. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. The gas. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. Cut that. Cut that. Cut <laughs> that. Uh, so, yeah, that will be eventually at some point. We expect it next year. And. New stuff, new stuff, new stuff. That's yeah. cool. I mean, there's a new stuff will arrive. A, a but, but releasing expansions or, or, or new books, uh, careful with it. We cannot have three books in a year, uh, like kind of what happened at Rising, Third of Offensive. That uh, makes the fan base and the player base become smaller and smaller and smaller because not so many people is aware of that. Mm. Having mm -hmm. just one rule book, just one set of rules uh, is better. Mm -hmm. So everybody can jump in. That makes sense. And, and consider that 2020 was not the best year to release a new edition of anything <laughs> because there was a pandemic. Yep. And we are still recovering, recovering from not having tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a few tournaments and a few TTS tournaments, which are no real tournaments at all and requires no, no skill at all. <laughs> 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 we cannot Sorry, wait Paul. to have to have again big events like uh, Row City Ride, yeah, yeah. We cannot wait to have physical events again, so people can use the miniatures again and uh, give us give us M4 feedback mm -hmm. on who wins, playing with what, and how many wins and how many, uh, which sure. armies are now the most powerful, or 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 people think they are the most powerful. You know, it just takes one. One plebeian or one uh, 
you know, uh, Exorcito or whatever, those super players. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, executor, Executor, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it takes one of those guys to pick one army that nobody thinks is powerful and put them in their hands, and he's like, boom, there you go, you know, like. What is the other guy? Executor against ah, the Polish guy. I don't remember your name. Sorry. It was a, a Polish guy who was a classical tournament player and, and a right to the final match. And, and you know, those players who give them Drews and they will win the good Drews. You know, it's the player, right. not the least. Right. I guess that makes me one of them, right? I did okay. I do okay with all, right, all right, Adam. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Settle down. Yeah. What, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that. Uh, because we have just a few tournaments, very low tournament count. Mm -hmm. We are not receiving yet convincing stats that makes you check, hey, this army now is on the top of the A tier list or whatever. Right. And this other army is in the lower, you know, Acontecimento and JSA as at some point was. JSA being the number one army, Acontecimento being the last army, mm. which are with a difference of 50% uh, success on tournaments. Mm -hmm. Well, those are interesting for us, and we want that, that data. And that data will come when people get back into tournaments and gameplay and stuff like that. And that makes sense. I think some people think the N4 is kind of moving a little bit slowly, but it also makes sense because Corvus Belly always, I feel like you guys always work with the data. Yeah. And so if the data comes in slowly, you don't want to react fast. You want to react slowly. You want to react at the same speed you can get the data in. Well, I don't say to, that we react to that. But we really care about those data, and, and it's very enlightening for you, you know. But mm -hmm. you know what? That 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 is also interesting. Code one boxes or battle packs usually sell more than a specific army packs or action packs, you know, specific of one army. But this year, the military orders box sold as many copies as Crimson Stone, for example. Holy cow! Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Space Knights. So, Who doesn't like Space Knights? Yeah. They're and, really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and Kingdom of Stone sold as expected. Okay. So the military orders so higher than expected. Hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah. That's, Get your hackers is, ready. That's, yeah. That makes Corvus Belli like, oh, well, uh, maybe we should release more action packs when they are made with, with, with care and with an improved army list also. Because mm -hmm. it was not just the box, the whole military orders received a, a reduction to profiles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that was made already with the M4 expansion. Right. We, we we made the M4 knights, but we also have the next list for the next evolution of the knights, you know, military orders redux. You know, we have a few of those cards already up in our sleeve. Yeah, it will happen. Um, so we mentioned the the new book coming out. There'll probably be, I guess, some progression of the story in there as well. Um, and I, I remember an announcement a while ago was that you teamed up with a book publisher to start maybe working on novels. Yes, that's that's a novel. That's a novel coming. Uh, Downfall. That's the name. And we made the cover already. Yeah, we have the cover. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's not written by Spaniards. It's written by a, an English native writer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not being translated from Spanish into English. It's, it's a, a British author, I guess, uh, okay. make, making a, a novel. And I won't reveal anything else. I don't want to spoil okay. anything, but yeah. No and apart, yeah. And apart from the novel, which is, you know, just, mm, words and paper we have another graphic novel comic manga as you mm -hmm. want uh, being made these days is uh, still in i mean pages are being made the story is already written and the pages is being made right? one after one after one you know it takes a lot of time to, yeah. to make a, a one are you, are the, you releasing it's, models it's, too with the with the uh, manga oh probably that usually happens and this time uh, some characters from previous uh, graphic novels will also show up so that's mm. why that's cool because we have some continuity there and as a new artist whose style will be closer in my opinion to the style of uh, Kenny Reith which was the one who made Outrage less similar than the artist who made uh, Betrayal the second one okay. I think it's closer to the first one in the looks proportion mm -hmm. of, of the style more 
more black on the pages. You know, when yeah. people is more, it's still manga but has more American shadows on it in a certain mm -hmm. way. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, that's always been one of the things for me. Like Infinity, there's such a a deep story of the human sphere, um, but it's it's kind of scattered everywhere, right? It's in various books. You have to go find your old copy of Paradiso on eBay if you want to read those stories. Um, so yeah, hearing that there's novels and more graphic novels coming out, something where you can get a lot of a lot of story condensed into a small uh, a small format and really consume. Um, that's really exciting uh, for me, at least, where I want to learn more about this universe. Yeah. Yeah. Those those are usually love projects from the company. I mean, if they are profitable, fine. But they are, you know, once the, the last novel or the last graphic novel covers a certain barrier of how much it costs and how uh, and where it has become profitable. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Green light, green light. Another one, you know, because it's made for love and and we also consider that some those products can also be a gateway of new people into mm -hmm, infinity sure. you know i mean I, I can show outrage to anyone you know without being an infinity gamer or anything else you know hey just read this thing and if you like it there's a whole ocean to delve into yeah and That's and exciting. you can play the characters too which is i think the coolest part right like, yeah in um, starco mostly yeah yeah uh, it's that's why I have Starco. <laughs> Saddam, you have everything. <laughs> I, I don't have everything. John has everything. I, I, I have just have everything. most MA2. Yeah, I have, <laughs> I, I, I have so many armies and not enough time to play. So I decided to do the ridiculous thing and play only out of print armies this year. So <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> which means you have, John, you have all armies, but which one is your main? I'm a nomad player. No math. Yeah, and, but I am. And I'm on the three sectorials. Which one? Uh, I'm a vanilla player. Specific. Vanilla, really? Yeah, specifically vanilla. Although, although my first <laughs> love was Merovingia, but when I started, uh, the guy who was getting me into the game already started Caledonia. So I was like, oh, we can't have two Ariadna sectorials in in like a three person pool. So I guess I'll start Nomads, and I haven't really looked back. And I finally, right, right when you guys uh, uh, took them out of the the, the roster, uh, I bought everything. So now I have everything. <laughs> the only the only two vanilla armies that I would really believe that a guy plays them competitively will be Hack Islam and Aleph. <sighs> if a guy tells me I play Ariana, which sectorial? But if a guy comes to me, I play Aleph. Playing Aleph or playing Hack Islam. Mm. Really? So Hack Islam. Old. Yeah. Hack Islam yeah. with, with Saladin and then Hafsas impersonating Saladin. And then, mm. you know, there, there are a few things that, that, that work to me. And Aleph has always been very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Aleph is really because strong. I was vanilla, vanilla combined all day long. Yeah. Like I've, oh, I mean, yeah. Bo both of us are vanilla players at heart. We just. Mine army. Yeah. 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 I'm. I'm vanilla combined and vanilla, and now vanilla Ariadna. Yeah. I can't wait to play vanilla Ariadna. It's so, so much camo. <laughs> it's so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much camo, werewolves, bears, mines. It's gonna be Spetsnaz. It's gonna be amazing. Sorry, John. Oh, I can't Spetsnaz. Wait. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we we actually prefer vanilla armies, which is kind of a funny thing because you know so everyone. Talks about their armies as a sectoral. Oh, come I, on, I, come on. The, 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 which is the best fire team is the constant conversation in Infinity oh, Forum. And, yeah. Always. Yeah. And I mean, John and I, when we play sectorals, we play three man fire teams, three yep. man core. Yep. I don't need a five man core. It's too, <laughs> it's too many. It's too, you know, for, for me, it's, it is, um, I'm not good at Infinity, as I tell people. And when I have all of my good things in one spot, all of my good things die at the same time. So if I if I split them up a little bit more, yeah, then it takes longer for John to kill me. <laughs> Seems about so, right. yeah, there we go. At least that's been my record basically all of COVID. Um, so we've uh, you, you mentioned getting data in. So tournaments are starting to pick back up a little bit though, yeah. Not around here. I I, I guess in the USA is you have. A bit, a bit of a tournament every month here in Spain, not at all. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean, to for for me to run the Road City Raid, I'm doing it outside with masks, ah. social distance. Everybody's vaccinated. 
have to prove Every, it. And everybody yeah. has proof of vaccination. Yeah, yeah. it has so to like, arrive with with a with a passport of I have been vaccinated. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. And probably uh, a rifle if someone catches Delta. And, yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's America. Everybody just carries a rifle anyways. Yeah, right? Oh, I, I buy you so much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> next time you next time you come, we'll go to the range. Yes. Oh yeah. Again, and let's let's let's, let's check if they have the Chris Vector this time. Last time I didn't have the Chris Vector in Vegas. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, we'll we'll, we'll take you out to the forest. I I, I know some folks. Yeah. Yeah, we just get to shoot ran in random directions because freedom. Well, well, well hold uh, on. <laughs> with with suppressors, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we have a uh, if we have if we still have a little bit of time, we have some questions from our community that we'd love to to throw your way, and and maybe you can give us some glimpses of the future. About, yeah, uh, do it, do it, do it fast, do it fast. Yeah, Let's okay. So in twenty minutes. Yeah. So uh, Aaron asks, um, are we ever going to see more JSA models? Right now, the JSA needs a new Domaru Takeshi Oyama, a new Shinobu Kutsune, and a new Shinobu Kutsune was made for Defiance, so we have the 3D model, mm -hmm. and a new y Yuriko Oda, or Yukiko Oda, yep. I'm mm -hmm. confused with the name, Yuriko or Yukiko, yep. sorry. Yuriko, yeah, that's right. Yuriko, yeah. because the old Dire Force boxes will be discontinued soon. The, oh. the ones that are eight years old, you know, right. they are sculpted by hand. So a lot of uh, Dire Force will need uh, a new model, and mm -hmm. some of them are very competitive profiles. Yeah. So that means that at some point we will discontinue Trasidime de San Lupe in order to have a new Trasidime San Lupe. Come on, I mean. Right. <laughs> yep. And and they fall in love. You know, we love that story. Okay, moving so, on. Um, <laughs> there's a remember that amazing faction T-shirt with all the factions. Are we gonna get a new one of those? With uh, NA2 and O12? We, we need to update them. Yeah, yeah, they're totally updated. I don't know if we will make it, but you know, if we make t-shirts, that one needs to be updated so. with O12 and NA2, of course. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, we better go quick. It looks like they're going to kick you out of the office. The lights just went out. Yep. Um, <laughs> what is, uh, Melanie asks, what is your favorite model? Recently, the Kim Miras 5 uh, new version. Yeah. Both thing. Luxumbra 75 millimeters or I mean, Corbus Belli yeah. uh, 35. Uh, beautiful. I mean, beautiful. I was so satisfied that it yeah. also makes me remind that I designed those units many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, Tanako Skyler wants to know Morans. Are we going to see some new Morans finally? Mor Morans Masai Hunters. Uh, they are designed, but uh, nomads are now in the code one treatment. So, and Morans have peripheral crazy koalas, which is a rule which is not in code one. Mm. So, we will have to wait until code one period is over in order to release them or interrupt the series and put the Moran right there, which mm. is what I would like to do. You know, doesn't matter. But yeah. <laughs> it's colliding just, with code one. In a I just way. finished painting mine after, after 10 years of not painting them. So. They're done now. Yeah. <laughs> well done, John. Yeah. Oh, Laxmi is there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool choice. Yeah, she's, uh, the new, she's the new one, right? <laughs> yeah. The new Moran, and, exactly. And there's and there's an artwork of Moran redesign in the M4 book, right? Am I right? Ooh, I don't know now. Yeah, I'd have to Been go look myself. I, <laughs> I remember making a new pinup of a new Moran. I don't know if that was released. Anyway, will happen, but uh, right now it's colliding with Code One. So um, his other question is, you know, with the with the out of production factions, uh, Contra Cemento, Merovingia, et cetera, are we going to see some, some more of those coming back? Oh, comeback! Everybody loves a comeback. Will happen. I don't know. I, I don't tell you which one. A comeback will happen in twenty two. Or oh, one. That's exciting. Okay. I mean, it will be exciting. I, I'm from marketing. They are willing, really willing to. Hey, 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 let's make a comeback. Let's make one of those armies come back with new 3D range, so everybody will be asking, which is the next one, you know, and in a certain way, the same treatment as the military order that the military orders had, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, to one of the discontinued ones. I mean, that will be the best way to come back, you know, which is something yeah, that we exciting. cannot wait to do. Okay. I'm excited. That is, um, that is super exciting. So, uh, Eric, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his ITS name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, 
you already answered a question about comics, but uh, do we are there going to be any more sectorals coming? We don't want to bloat the sectorials uh, to 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 have even more. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, in my opinion, is affecting specifically to Hack Islam more than any other, because Hack Islam is still waiting for the uh, Gakbak Kanate, which is the mm. motorized sectorial army of the Qum and stuff like that. But right now we are really like, do we bring Kapukalki back or do we make the Kanate sectorial mm. a thing, mm. you know? And both options are so attractive. I mean, come on. Yeah. But... Yeah, but to that decision is like we cannot sustain sustainability is the thing, and and maybe getting into another sectoral army will be unsustainable, and and, and then we will have to say okay now Hassassin has to go, and Hassassin has a, a lovely range and is still waiting for three or more four miniatures the Shakus the Hassassin Sujae, the uh, the new character mm -hmm. uh, has to be uh, have to be sustainable decisions. You know, makes sense. Well, yeah, I'm, absolutely. All right, and our our last ones for you here are. Um, you mentioned that we're going to see some of these tags in uh, with N4 profiles. Um, is there going to be you know are there going to be optional weapons and stuff like that that maybe fit into tag rate or N4? Uh, are the models going to be customizable at all? You mean if are they going to have extra uh, alternative pieces? Yeah, yeah. Set of, well, Defiance had that for the heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and and Defiance is pretty much the the way to go to that. So without checking it out, I would say that is very likely to happen. But I'm I'm not checking the Excel files. Yeah, here, okay. okay. Gotcha, gotcha. We, we won't hold you to it. But what they didn't get in Defiance was extra additional bodies. It was just arms. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And the alternative version of Cutting First Strike looks really cool. And I haven't even seen a single photo of that option loadout over there. Everybody puts him with the machete. But there's an option of oh, Cutting First one. Strike with the Claymore and looks incredible. But, you know, maybe if we put additional bodies, people would have assembled that, you know. So there it is. John has got him right there. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite one by far. Oh, he's so cool. Yeah. Oh, kind of. I'm not looking at. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so. There you go, John. That's, that's, that's <laughs> you know, the, the only the correct one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> show oh, it again. Show it again. All right. Show, show, me, show oh. it to me again. Oh, we, we got his video up. There we go. There you go. He's going to start painting it. <laughs> I just gotta, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm one to talk. Yeah. Guys. When playing Defiance, remember, just Kiangao, mm. then whatever you do. But Jazz and Kiangao must be in the team, okay? Okay. If you play without Jazz, then you are playing in nightmare difficulty. Okay. <laughs> hard mode. For, for hard mode, for opening any door, for, for accomplish every any mission, okay? Jazz has to be in your team, always, okay? At some point, you will want to carry Jazz over your shoulders just to hurt not spending actions in walking and just hack everything you know <laughs> <laughs> just get on my shoulders so you yeah, yeah. Abso to. absolutely absolutely give some some uh i don't know a, a seat over kiangao's armor and, and, yeah. and move around yeah there you go there's there's an expansion idea for you it's like <laughs> a, a baby bjorn for for jazz <laughs> just strapped to kiangao oh that's okay, well Thank you so much, Carlos, for taking time out of your day to hang out and talk with us about Infinity. It's been a blast. Yeah. Glad to finally get you on. Thank you so much to you guys. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, everyone, we'll kick it back to John and Adam over on Twitch. Back to you, John and Adam. Hey. Yeah, well, that, was a, that was a lot of hot goss, eh? Holy cow. There's some, there's some juicy morsels in there. Um, yeah, so we've heard the what a sectoral is coming back. <gasps> Le Gasp, will it be Murph? Um, like, <laughs> right, that, that's that's pretty rad. Um, yeah, lots of juicy bits of that whole conversation. So, 
plenty of things to look forward to. I'm glad that uh, N4 has been moving along. I'm really, I'm honestly the the biggest one I think is going to be, you know, whatever happens to fire teams, right? Like when they, when they clean up the annex. Yes. That'll um, be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be steel phalanx, Murph, QK. Who knows? Yeah. Could be any of those. I think Murph was the first to get rotated out, right? It was, and there were such cool designs. Like, really, if they just scaled up those designs, if they were done, I don't think they were done digitally, though. Mm-hmm. Um, no, they're they're, not. they're they're so good, though. They're so characterful. I mean, there's a reason why I wanted to get them in, like, as get them as my first army, I should say. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. But I would be more than happy to have Murph be, like, out of print for a very long time to increase their hipster factor. <laughs> You just need to be, you need to be the only one. I know I I need, maybe I'll just paint all my Murph cause I haven't painted them yet. I just paint them wearing flannel. Oh goodness. Well, everyone. Yep. While you guys uh, speculate on what is going to be coming out in the future and what are going to happen to your beloved fire teams. Uh, I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> yes. Well, we should, we should talk about some stuff first. Oh right? yeah. So uh, we should talk about the Rose City Raid results. So here we go. Oh. So these are the, ro- the Road to Rose City results. There we go. Okay. okay so uh, I ran a small league, uh, just 10 players uh, in preparation, just like an online TTS thing, making use of the Rose City Raid uh, terrain features. And these are the final rankings after everybody played the Armory. Thank you for everybody getting their scores in. A couple of people were a little bit uh, late, but that's totally fine. Uh, I was late in looking at the like looking at the results anyway, so it all worked out. Congratulations to Lobo zero seven zero five for taking it home. Uh, he edged out Hannibal as fun by you know a little bit over four a uh, little bit over a hundred VP. So that was actually a pretty tight situation uh, breaking uh, breaking the tie via VP, which is why we we do that right because it does yeah. happen sometimes. Um, the armory was super super bloody. We can take a look at this right. So like a lot of these were like very skewed wow. missions, right? So a lot of like 10-0, 9-0, 8-0, and then like 40 points, 50 points remaining on a side. Uh, so hopefully you guys had fun. Um, you know, I, I run I run leagues pretty infrequently. Uh, if you enjoy this sort of thing, uh, you can definitely check out the Infinity Global League, right? At infinitygloballeague.com. They've got a Discord if you want to play in TTS leagues all the time. I just wanted to run one before Rose City. So people had an opportunity to practice the missions or missions like the missions that we're, that we're having in uh, Rose City, as well as checking out the new terrain rules. So, uh, yeah, we'll probably do one of these every once in a while for our locals. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys had a good time. Uh, well, we did have some uh, mailbag stuff to talk about. So Tanako Skyler has sent in a, a mission that he is calling The Sequence. So effectively, mm-hmm. what you need to know is there is a... Let's see if I can... Oops. Okay, so basically there are four antenna things or consoles in the center of the table uh, which form a rectangular region. And your job is to uh, beep boop one of the buttons, right? You pick any one you want. That's your start uh, in your sequence, right? Hence the sequence mission title. And uh, you have to run around in a circle and beep boop all of them in order. Right, so you okay. have to do them in sequence, right? Hence the name, and then land on this one you started on, and you get max points that way. So each consecutive console gets you one more point. Uh, killing more specialists gets two points. Killing the same number of specialists gets one point. And hanging out in the region uh, and dominating that the uh, region that's uh, that's um, the zone the circumscribed by the uh, the the four consoles gets you three points. So. It looks like a pretty bloody game. It reminded me a lot of Tic-Tac-Toe because of all the various consoles and having to do things in particular position and order. Um, and, you know, putting stuff in the middle has some fun area control things. Uh, he sort of pitched it to me as a uh, sort of training thing without a lot of classified. So sort of like the next step up from uh, seize the antennas, right? Is that what it is? Um, so yeah. like the, the next the next um, rung up in, in mission difficulty. So it's a cool mission. Uh, if you want to try it, I'm sure you can get in contact with him. Uh, and and uh, or I can, I'll talk to him about publishing the uh, the document somewhere for for you to check out. Um, it's it looks pretty straightforward. One thing that I am concerned about is it kind of looks like it might suffer from the power pack going second syndrome where you just like have a bunch of to camo things like imagine revealing three clips us at the end you could probably tag most of the sequence 
just with their hidden deployment order uh, and then throw them into the center and they'll probably survive. So uh, you could potentially swing a game uh, that way. But who knows? Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. So it's it's a very board control heavy mission. You're gonna to want to like take as you know as many uh, camo infiltrating specialists you can get in there. Yeah, really yeah. just to ensure to get those points to, for the for completing the sequence. Yeah, and it's pretty order intensive, right? Like you're not really going to be running a one model around doing this because so the, you know as you can see in the diagram, uh, the left to right separation of these objectives is it's a full two feet, right? So you're gonna to have to really spent a lot of orders moving it across. So you, you're basically going to have uh, a bunch of specialists on both sides of the table to, to accomplish this, like left and right. And then you can actually sort of uh, break your opponent's ability to do this by killing the appropriate specialists on the appropriate side of the table. So there's a lot of like fun stuff that emerges as a result of it. Uh, if anybody else yeah. has any fun mission ideas or anything they want to suggest or just like have people try out, we're happy to lend you the, 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 the megaphone as it says, so it were right. that we have here, and you can we can uh, have a discussion. So yeah, send anything like this to mailbag at latenightwargames.com. Yeah, I'm just thinking how I'd want to have like a, a specialist on a bike on one side that could move and push a button in one order after yep. hitting the first button. Yep. And then you know a separate set of specialists in a different order pool on the left, you know, on the left side. Right. Um, yeah, not bad. I li I do like the the zone in the middle. It feels a little tight at six inches, but worth a shot. Yep. So if you want to talk to him, uh, Tanako Skyler, about the mission that he's designed, you can come hang out on the Dice Abide live Discord, which you can find the link to at latenightwargames.com. And, uh, you know, chat him up about it. Let him know what you think, any feedback, any... If you tried the mission, I'm sure he'd love to hear about it. Um, yeah. Lots of fun things. Maybe, maybe you know, there's other, other opportunities to, to do things as well. But, uh, yeah. That's it for the mailbag. Very cool. Thanks for writing in, man. Well, you've wasted another perfectly good evening listening to Late Night War Games. All right, John, talk us out. Yeah, so just a reminder, we've got Broman Academy missions running right now, as well as Lumbering Sprocket missions. You can paint stuff, send it in. Uh, we'll post it, get prizes. You check out all the details at lumberingsprocket.com and bromanacademy.com. Uh, I've got some stuff in the works for infinitytheacademy.com as well. Uh, and again, if you want more playtime, go check out infinitygloballeague.com. So lots of .coms to go around. We should get a .net all in the, there. All the coms. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, we're here every Tuesday night at 8.33 uh, p.m. Pacific time. That's UTC minus 7. Um, it's a weird time, so we upload all of our stuff to YouTube and to all of your favorite audio-only podcast apps. So you can listen to us in the car on your way to work. Um, if you like what we do, you want to support us, you can check out our Patreon and become a late night war gamer. That's what we call our patrons. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, Corvus Belly, DreamPod 9, Mythic Games, Board and Brew, War Cradle Studios, and Brutal Cities. All right. Be sure to catch us on Facebook, YouTube, and anywhere, anywhere that you get your podcast. And if you enjoy the show, please take a moment to give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Follow us on Twitch and YouTube. And all that will help us bring you the best content we possibly can. And you know... Being a late night war gamer, supporting us on Patreon doesn't just uh, put a little skrilla in our pockets. We find some fun, random ways to to give back to the community. Um, and you know, so one of the things we've got coming up is we've got an extra copy of Moonstone because I kickstarted it, and then they sent me a copy. So I'm probably going to give that away to one of our one of our uh, our top tier patrons. And then we also have. Um, you know, the, the thing going right now where if you subscribe for three months in a row, I'm going to send you a model. And, you know, the next one starts in September. So, you know, start, uh, start supporting us in September. And if you back all the way through December, we'll send you another model. So, you know, we, we don't have any uh, heavily structured rewards necessarily because I'm not that organized. Um, but, you know, we try to find ways to make it fun. But, yeah, we really appreciate everything. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for tonight, and stay safe out there. We'll see you next week. So long. It's been lovely. Good night, everyone. Uh, 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 uh. Won't you play games with me? And I like to do everyone. That's what I like to do. That's what I like to do. That's what I really like to do. That's what I really like to do.